born in Wollongong 55 years ago, grew up and worked through Australia in the mining industry. Currently the Chief Executive Officer of Anglo-American Corporation based out of London. My name is Mark Kudafati. Anglo-American is a global mining corporation. We're based out of London. We mine platinum, iron ore, coal, manganese, diamonds, nickel, phosphate, niobium, and a whole range of other things. Uh, we have 140,000 people doing a wonderful job all over the world. I started working in the mining industry 37 years ago, literally straight out of school. I guess working at the coalface, and that's where I started, and doing university at the same time, I was able to connect the basic things that people have to do to deliver an outcome with the business potential that we have to deliver on the other end. So for me, starting at the face meant that I had to learn what life was like at the tough end of the business, and at the same time equated to the returns that we need to deliver in the business. And so being able to connect those two worlds has certainly served me well over 37 years and I think has made a big difference in me being an effective leader, um, certainly in terms of the things I do today. A defining moment for me in my career was at 22 years of age, I was working underground as a miner and one of the guys that was uh, elected to train uh, me and help me understand the ropes, understand in particular safety, was Stanley Baker. Stanley, about 50 years of age, uh, Englishman, Yorkshire miner, uh, lots of experience. He was there to show me the ropes and help me understand the things I should be doing to make sure I was looking after myself and looking after my colleagues. One night on night shift, uh, I was on the day shift, uh, Stanley was actually hit uh, un and caught under a fall of uh, the roof and was killed. Now for me, that was a very personal situation and, and I actually saw Stanley on the way out um, and he was with I think six of his colleagues that were with him at the time and so safety had become very personal. And for me in the last 33 years I've always focused on who people are, making sure I got to know them personally and making sure that everything we do in the workplace is about looking after people and making it very personal. If you can't make it personal, if you can't demonstrate that you care for people, why do you think people would go out of their way to deliver the best they can for you? Whether it's in safety or more broadly in the business, if you don't demonstrate as a leader that you're about people and you stand for people, then don't expect them to support you in trying to achieve the objectives of the organisation. And for me, leadership is about caring and demonstrating that caring and safety is I think the most compelling example of how we care for people and who we are and the humanity that we have as leaders. Working across 25 countries from the most developed to those that are emerging economies, we have one standard, one expectation in terms of safety. Anybody who says you have different standards, quite frankly, doesn't understand the nature of people and what they can aspire to achieve. How you get there, how you articulate and how you work to those standards and delivery of those standards is where you may have to think very differently in the nature of the workforce. Let's say in Australia, highly educated workforce understands how you look at safety from a particular perspective. When I go to Tanzania, 70% literacy, most people have never worked in an industrial environment, they've come off farms. How we train and educate the workforce to be safe in that environment is very different to the way we train and educate people in the Australian environment. Understanding that how you achieve that outcome is different, but the standards don't change. If they did, then again I think we've failed the test as leaders. If you're looking to change the culture of an organisation, you should always start with safety because safety is something that no one will ever argue with you on in terms of it's the right imperative. To look after people, to make sure they're safe and health is the primary objective and the most important objective of any leader in the business. Interestingly, as of yesterday, uh, for the first time in 100 years, Anglo-American is fatality free in a quarter. And so for me, 
That's a very important milestone. After that conversation comes the conversation around the business, the results that we've been achieving which are unacceptable, and why we need to create something different. And again, safety is a good way to at least make that first connection and then to take ourselves into the conversation around other parts of the business. And so for us, it's been absolutely important to demonstrate that our margins have been squeezing, our costs aren't where they need to be. But it's actually more than that. It's about making sure that we're positioning all parts of the business to be successful. And that's not simply about cost cutting. It's about productivity, increasing production in some areas, reducing costs in others, improving some other dimension of the business. And we've been able, been able to bring all of those pieces together. And in the first 12 months, we were already a billion dollars a year from an earnings perspective better than we were 12 months ago. So that's been significant. And put that back with the safety milestone achieved. It's no accident, pardon the pun, that those two things have been connected. If you don't connect with your employees at a personal level, then you shouldn't be surprised with respect to anything that can happen in your business, whether it's a serious safety incident, whether it's strikes, lack of productivity, whether it's a whole range of things that are negative. If you're not connected and close to your workforce, then you shouldn't be surprised by anything. On the other side, if you've got a good relationship, if you're working together, then anything's possible. And again, for me, it's about making sure every relationship in the workplace is up close and personal. In terms of safety, if you're a leader in the business, the way you think about every individual is as is, is if it's your brother or your sister. If you don't think about everybody in the workplace in that same way, I don't think you've got your head right in terms of how you relate to people, how you work with people, and how you create a, an environment that they'll want to do their best in terms of being part of the team to deliver exceptional results. It is about your commitment to them. That is how they'll judge whether they'll work and do the best with you and the team. I guess if anybody were to ask my advice on leadership, and how we should think about what's possible in the workplace, I'd make maybe three suggestions. Firstly, what you will achieve will be limited by what you can see as a leader. It certainly won't be the workers that are limited in their perspective, it's the leadership. I've always found that those organisations that don't achieve their objectives are those organisations that are poorly led or where the leader can't see what's possible. Go to the workforce, they can see what's possible. It's usually the leadership that limits performance, the first point. Second point, as leaders, our job is not only to paint a picture of what's possible, it's also up to us to put the structures, the processes and the systems in place that removes the barriers for people working in the organisation to deliver results. So you are charged with the responsibility to make sure all the processes and structures that you have in place are coherent, are consistent, and they allow people to get on and do their work safely, productively, and with minimal waste. You're the leader, that's what you're accountable for. The third point is about delivery. At the end of the day, there will always be the unexpected and the barriers will be there. As the leader, you are the person that can remove barriers and what you have to do is make sure that people understand that they also are empowered to remove the barriers and solve problems to deliver results. So being focused and make sure everybody understands how far they can go, what their accountabilities are, what they're responsible for, you'll get the results. It's in your hands. In fact, leaders usually limit performance. Don't let, your fall, don't let yourself fall into that trap. If you're a leader, make sure that people see the real potential in the organisation and that you're not the problem. I guess in terms of the legacy of health and safety, the programs that I've been involved in and learnt from and then subsequently led have made a significant difference, firstly, by making sure that 
a worker goes home safe and healthy to their family, and that's the most important legacy I think I can leave, um, certainly in my career, and if it's one, then that's a great achievement. If it's a lot more than one, then for me, a great achievement in terms of the career. Longer term, I think for the mining industry, it's a vision of our industry. I think we're 30 years behind the manufacturing sector. I think we're behind many other sectors that are doing a wonderful job in safety. If we can close that gap, and by the time I retire or beyond that, uh, we seem to be a safe industry, and there are actual measures for those sorts of industries, and we're a long way from it. But if we're a safe industry, then from my point of view, I think we've done a good job, and, and that's the way it should be. When I talk about health and safety, we talk about almost a reactive approach, making sure we're managing risks, making sure that people aren't hurting themselves, a whole range of things that you sort of say, well, gee, that's not very visionary. Um, what I'd like to think in 2025, every employee is better off for having worked with Anglo-American. The fact that we make them aware of themselves that we encourage them to eat well, to exercise, to improve their quality of life. So as a consequence of working in our organisation, they experience a better quality of life at work because they're respected, they're given the opportunity to express themselves in a very personal way. And when they go home, they continue living a, a lifestyle that supports them with a safe, long, healthy, happy life. And, and for me, I want people to say, if you work for Anglo-American, then you've got the best of everything.